What's up everyone, David here from the Firebase team and welcome to a brand new season of Firecast where we're gonna be showing you the all new Firebase. And on today's episode, I'm gonna show you how to get set up with the real-time database in Android. And since that's so easy, we'll spend the rest of our time covering the basics of the real-time database by building an app. Then you'll know everything that you need to know to get started in just a few minutes. So let's go and dive in. Open your Gradle file, and the first thing you need to do is include Google Play Services. So in dependencies, I'm just gonna set the class path for Google Play Services 3.0. And then I need to open up the app build.gradle file. In the dependencies section, I need to include the Firebase core and real-time database dependencies. And these are just com.google.firebase and firebase-database and firebase-core. And lastly, I need to apply the plugin for Google Play Services. So there you go, it's as easy as that. Now that we're all set up, let's build an app. We're gonna build a social, local, mobile, crowdsourced weather app that will tell you whether it's sunny or foggy in San Francisco. It is a pretty basic app, but it covers the fundamentals of saving and synchronizing data in real time. So let me go and show you how that works. So now that I'm all set up, I'm gonna build out my UI. So I'm gonna open up the main activity layout. So I'll delete the stock text view, and I'm gonna add a larger text view to the screen, and I'm gonna set the text to condition, and then change the ID to text view condition. Now I need to add the buttons for sunny and foggy. So I'll add a button down here, I'll change the text to sunny, and the button ID to button sunny, and then drag another one, and just do the same for foggy. So the text is foggy, and the ID is button foggy. So great, the UI is all set up, but we actually need to wire these components in the main activity. So I'll open up the main activity, and then I'll add them as properties, and then just use find view by ID to wire them up over here in onCreate. So now we need to talk to the real-time database. The first thing I need is a connection. And to do that, I'm going to create a database reference. So as a property, I'll type database reference is m root reference, and that's going to equal Firebase database dot get instance dot get reference. And the reason why I'm calling this root ref is because when we get a reference, it gets us a reference to the root of the Firebase JSON tree. So the next step is to listen for real time changes. Whenever the condition in the database changes, we want to update the text views text property. So to listen for that change, I'm gonna create a value listener in the onStart lifecycle method. So I'll create onStart, and then inside of onStart, I'm going to create a child reference. I'm gonna call it the condition reference, and that is going to equal the root reference. I'm gonna call dot child, and then pass through the string condition. So by calling child on the root is that we're creating a location of condition underneath the root. And then we're going to be setting a value. So either, you know, sunny or foggy. So I'll just copy it up here and then paste it below the root ref and then change it so it's m condition ref. So now that I have access to the condition location, I'll create a listener. So inside of on start, I'm going to call the add value event listener method. And notice that I'm calling add value event listener on the condition ref. So we're attaching it to the location of condition. Inside of here, I'm gonna give it a new value event listener. And this is just two methods inside of the anonymous inner class. So the first is on data change, and this will get fired every single time the condition value updates in the real-time database. And then on canceled is if we run into any errors. So inside on data change, we're getting our data back as a data snapshot. And this contains your data and other useful methods. So what I want to do is I want to use this snapshot and synchronize it to the text view. So first I'm going to get the data back as a string. So I'll call data snapshot dot get value. And then to make sure it's a string, I'm going to pass in the string class. And then now that I know it's a string, I can go to the text view and then call set text by passing in the text. So I have the app up and running over here and I have the real time database viewer right here. So there's no data yet. So let me add a condition location. So I'll hit plus type condition and we'll set its initial value to sunny with an exclamation mark. Nothing happened. Why is that? 
Well, that's because the default security rules only allow authenticated users to access data. So if I click over into the rules tab, you can see that within these rules, we have dot read and dot write, and they both have a rule of auth not equal to null. And like I said, this only allows authenticated users to write or read from anywhere in your database. So we're just developing an app, so we don't have to lock down our rules just yet. So we're gonna set everything to be readable and writable. But when you go to production, you should not do that because Anyone can access your data, and I think you know that's probably not a good thing. So for read, I'm gonna just write true, and the same for write, and then just make sure to publish your changes. So now back in the data tab, I'm gonna restart the app, and you can see that we have the value of Sunny. But to prove it to you, I'll actually go and change the value. So we'll remove the exclamation mark, and boom, it updates in real time. So that works, but if we are to click on any of these buttons, it's not going to update this condition and therefore update the text view. So let's change that in our app. So back in Android Studio, I need to set click listeners for these two buttons. So on M button sunny, I'll set on click listener with a new on click listener. And then inside of the click listener, I'm going to call condition ref dot set value. So keep in mind that the condition ref connects us out to the slash condition location. So if we call set value on it, it will replace anything that's currently there, which in this case is sunny. So whenever someone clicks on the sunny button, we want the value to be sunny. So I'll throw in a string of sunny, and then I'm just gonna copy and do the same for foggy. So it's really important to understand the data flow here, is that we're actually calling set value in both of these click listeners, and we're not directly updating the text view, we're not directly updating some internal data source, we're updating the real-time database. And then when the real-time database updates, the on data change method fires and therefore updates our text view. So the lesson here is don't modify your local state, let everything come from the real-time listeners. So now when I click the buttons, the database updates in real time, and therefore, so does the text view. And there you go. You're all set up with the real-time database and only in a couple of minutes. And that's all for this Firecast, but please leave your questions in the comments below or reach out to us on Twitter and G Plus with the hashtag AskFirebase. And we're gonna be dropping a new Firecast every few days, so don't forget to hit that subscribe button to stay up to date. I'm David East, and thanks for watching. Thank you.